Starship Super Heavy Booster is just weeks away from lining up its Raptor engines, Starlink aims for a new orbit later this month, Polaris Dawn completes another week of training, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Since our last meetup on Tuesday, SpaceX has repaired Starship 24 and reinstated its stress testing regimen. The Mars spaceship prototype saw some action both on Wednesday and Thursday. Yesterday, her lower LOX tank was topped off with liquid nitrogen, then detanked about an hour later. Elon tweeting afterward that she passed her cryogenic proof test. This comes after its failure during its first ambient test last Friday when one of its pipes couldn't handle the pressure, speculated to be associated with the new header tank configuration. So it can reasonably be assumed cryo testing is far from over for the ship. Road closures are set in place for next week. This partner in crime, Booster 7, remains in the new mega bay up Highway 4, where it received a new set of grid fins on Wednesday in preparation for Starship Super Heavy's first orbital flight, if the FAA gives a green light later this month. And after a year of, for lack of a better term, lag time since SN15 took to the skies, it's time to get psyched again, boys. Elon tweeted Booster 7 static fires will commence in just a few weeks. All of the engines that are needed for the first orbital flight are complete and being installed on the first stage vehicle. As expected, SpaceX will start conservatively by firing up each group of Raptor 2s independently before moving on to all 33 engines at once. That is, of course, unless he literally means one engine at a time. But that seems a little too timid a move for the Elon Musk we all think we know. The last time Starship lit up was back in December. The last time a booster did the same was Booster 3 in July of last year. It was also the first time. And if that's what just three Raptor 1 engines can do, imagine what 33, 25% more powerful Raptor 2s can do to Earth. Do it! Just do it! SpaceX has requested authority from the FCC to begin placing Starlink satellites into a new orbit around the planet from Vandenberg as early as the end of the month. Group 3, also referred to as Shell 3, rests at a 97 degree inclination. SpaceX will park a few hundred satellites there at an altitude 560 clicks up for phase one, which is a much lower tally than the more than 3,000 satellites being deployed to previous groups one and four. However, SpaceX's next mission isn't Starlink. On Tuesday, they'll be launching CRS-25, the next Cargo Dragon 2 resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. NASA has also made their intentions public to purchase five more Crew Dragon missions to the ISS, citing a need to add more missions to their SpaceX contract for the rest of the decade, in part due to Boeing Starliner's development delays. A few months back, the agency added three additional Crew Dragon missions to the six they already had on the books, so if this deal goes through, it will bring the total count up to 14. The crew of Polaris Dawn completed their second week of training after spending four nights climbing three mountains and volcanoes, one of which was Cotopaxi in Ecuador. Polaris Dawn is the second Crew Dragon mission sponsored by private U.S. citizen Jared Isaacman, set to launch later this year. They'll be attempting SpaceX's first spacewalk to prepare the company for future manned Starship missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. But speaking of space suits, brah, now it's time for today's honorable mention. NASA announced on Wednesday the winners of the Exploration Extravehicular Activity Services contract that allowed vendors to compete for the ability to build NASA's new spacewalking spacesuits for future space station and Artemis moonwalking missions ultimately preparing humanity for missions to Mars. SpaceX was one of the companies competing for the opportunity, but it wasn't meant to be. So without further ado, I am very happy to announce that the awardees will be Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace Industry Team. Oh well, by the time NASA needs these space suits, SpaceX will already have been to Mars with their own. These two commercial partners will be responsible for design, development, qualification, certification, and production of their suits, as well as the support equipment that comes with it to enable space station and Artemis missions. So NASA will essentially be renting them. The government wants them ready for Artemis 3's lunar landing mission, currently scheduled for no earlier than 2025. Now that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to my local supporters supporting the channel. Link below for those interested. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. Godspeed.